All right. Hello, everyone. Um, we're in the session of the special track of esports and online games. And today's session, the first session, we, we, the first session was the keynote, but the second session is about winning and personalizing. And we start off uh, this session by an industry talk uh, by Aline Critanou, uh, if I pronounce that somewhat correctly, uh, from yes, Logitech. Yes. So uh, please uh, give it away. Uh, we're looking forward to your presentation. Great. Thank you. So let me share my screen. Can you see it? Yep, I guess see. so. Great. So, yeah, thanks a lot for the introduction. So I'm going to talk about Playmaster today, which is a personalized and engaging training tool designed by Logitech, where I'm actually working. So let me start with a short introduction. In many e-games, an individual's competitive ranking is typically the only metric that we use to describe their expertise level. And then both amateur and more elite players improve their rank usually by simply dedicating more time to play matches directly in the game without any clearly defined methodological plans. And in addition to this, there is currently no easy way to assess how likely a newbie is to become a professional or at least to become a very good player. And all of those are kind of rationals between, uh, behind the, the, the exploration that I'm going to talk about now. So Logitech has put together five key elements to design a training tool. The first one is to propose an in-game training, which is very specific to a single game. And I guess this is one of the major difference between Playmaster and other existing platforms, which are often more generic in order to match or to tap into different games. Then be player centric is really a key to Logitech spirit. And we also partnered with Pro so that the, the tool is as relevant as possible to the players uh, by keeping in mind always that the players should have fun while training. And last but not least, science should be the foundation of this platform. So as I told you, the training tool, training tool sorry, is called Playmaster. So it was designed and developed using the CSGO architecture and game mechanics. So for those of you who are not familiar with CSGO, if there are any, it is, so CSGO is short for Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and it is a 2012 multiplayer first-person shooting game. So Playmaster is uh, publicly available on playmaster.gg if you're interested to test it. But please note that Playmaster is not a commercial product. It's really designed as a scientific exploration tool. And I would like to emphasize as well that part of what I'm going to present to you today is not released to the public. So in Playmaster, we designed a virtual coach that you can see on the right side of this, uh, the slide. And the science behind this coach can be segmented into three different parts that you can see here on the left. So we have first started with a well-established schema in neurocognitive science, which is to basically isolate the skills that matter to achieve a specific goal, which in our case is to become a better player. Then we used AI to identify specifically what each and every player has to train in order to improve. So in other words, we try to identify our players' weaknesses and strengths. Last but not least, we use the science behind performance training to offer a personalized training that aims at improving as fast as possible while having fun. So let me go through each of these segments one by one starting with the neurocognitive science one. So here from traditional sports, we know that the deliberate training of individual skills is a better method for improving complex task performance compared to simply performing the task over and over. And this is called variable priority training. So this strategy of testing and training the component skills instead of training the whole task also has the benefit of identifying some weaknesses. And this can drive a faster improvement when those weaknesses are trained. So Logitech has started by isolating some skills that are key to CSGO. And here you can see eight of these uh, basic skills. So for example, we have tracking, which is the ability of the player to keep the mouse cursor on a moving target. 
Then maybe the most obvious skill is aiming, also called shooting, which is the ability of the player to hit stationary targets appearing at different distances or directions. Then peaking, the ability of the player to move sideways and kill stationary targets in very small corridors, or also spraying, that is super important. So it's the ability of the player to control the spray of a weapon to make as much damage as possible. And then we have jumping, perceiving, and here I mean rather auditory perception, flicking, holding, and others. So here are uh, some screenshots uh, that come directly from the, the Playmaster platform. So it may not seem obvious at first sight, but for example, this one is a, a skill, also a kind of a mini game that was designed to fit one specific skill, and it is the tracking skill. So in that mini game, the player simply has to uh, try to follow the target as closely as possible while the target is moving left and right and forward and backward. This uh, mini game is uh, more for the, the shooting part. So the player here has to shoot as fast and as accurately as possible at the target. This one is about peeking. So you can see the wall behind which the, the player is hiding before a target appears. Then this one is about spraying. We have flicking here and holding and others, of course. So Logitech has also conducted a study in collaboration with the eSports Science Research Lab at the University of Limerick in Ireland. And in this study, we had three groups of participants. The first one was uh, non-gamers, so there were 21 non-gamers. Then we had 19 low-skill gamers, which uh, actually have a CSGO rank that is below Gold Nova Master, for those of you who are familiar with the ranking in CSGO. And the last group was uh, made out of 17 high skill gamers, which uh, had a rank above Gold Nova Master. So here we were interested in the time to destroy, which is the time between the presentation of a target and the destruction of the target by the participant. So the participants were basically uh, tested using this kind of uh, mini game. I hope it's working. So they have to simply shoot at the target as fast and as accurately as possible. When a target is down, another one appears. Great. So the first thing that we, we observed is that all three groups significantly differed in their uh, time to destroy. So in this figure here, you can see the time to destroy on the Y axis. So the lower, the better. And then you can see the three different groups with the colors. And as expected, the high skill gamers performed significantly better than the low skill gamers and than the non-gamers. Non and similarly, the low skill gamers performed significantly better than the non-gamers. So somehow these results suggest that the time to destroy is a good proxy for the, to, to estimate the, the skill level of a player. Then the second part of the study was about training. So here the, the participants in all three groups were trained for 10 minutes a day for five consecutive days with the mini game that I showed you on the previous slide. And here you have the, the results. So we have one panel for each group and we still show the time to destroy on the Y axis. Now on the X axis, you have three data points. The first one is the baseline test, which was uh, performed just before the first training day. Then the post-test just after the last training day and the retention test, which was three days after the last training day. So what we can see here is that the, the gamers of all groups performed significantly better in the post-test compared to the baseline test, which means that actually the training was efficient, right? And this is true for all groups. And in addition to this, we can see that for the non-gamers and the low-skill gamers, there was also a significant improvement between the retention test and the baseline test, which somehow means that learning has uh, been retained after a few days. So let's go to the, the second segment about AI. And here uh, it's rather simple. So what we did is that we used our tool to, uh, to, to gather information about our users. So the users played on Playmaster, we uh, collected the data and we performed some very basic statistics on those data. So for example, we had one score per skill and in order to compare these uh, scores across the different skills, we simply standardized them. And that way we were able to highlight what are the weaknesses and the strengths of each and every player. 
So for example, here you have a screenshot that comes directly from Playmaster, where you can see my performance in pink uh, for the eight uh, basic skills that I showed you before. And you can also see in blue the performance of the community, which is kind of an average of all the players that use our tool. And we also have uh, the, the indication about some pro players in red. So what we can see here is that, for example, for the spraying and jumping, jumping uh, skill, I am not that good compared to the other skills. Because here you can see that I'm closer to the community, while for the peak rifle and hold AWP skills, for example, I'm closer to the pro level, right? So we can really see what are my strengths and what are my weaknesses with this plot. And with this slide, I would like to really highlight the fact that both the strengths and the weaknesses are important to train. So of course, I want to train my weaknesses because I want to improve my overall performance, that's for sure. But I also want to avoid giving the enemies an obvious and easy way to beat me or to beat my team, since this is a, a team game, right? And it's also important to, to, to train my strengths because I want to become or to stay an expert in that skill so, so that my teammates and I together make a very good and very strong team, right? And just as a side note, this is not my performance. I cheated a little bit on this one. This is one of my friends because my performance is actually very close to the center. So it's pretty hard to highlight what are my strengths, even though we can highlight the strengths and the weaknesses of any type of player, beginner or high level players. So once we have highlighted what are the weaknesses and the strengths of a player in terms of skills, we can dig a little bit further and look at the features of each individual skill. So here, for example, let's assume that we have identified peak as a weakness of certain player. Now we want to know where exactly in this skill the player has some weaknesses or strengths. So we can, for example, look at the accuracy in that skill. We can look at the time to shoot or time to kill. We can look at different geographic location. For example, a player may be better at shooting on the left side versus the right side. We can look at the number of kills within a certain amount of time or the, the body parts that were shot and so on and so on. So altogether, we, we have kind of two levels of uh, strength and weaknesses. So we examine first the strengths and weaknesses at the level of the skills. And then we dig in, we zoom in, and we check the, what are the features that are weak or strong. Now, a uh, third part, which is about the coaching sign. So now that we have identified what are the strengths and the weaknesses, we want to be trained, right? So the goal of Playmaster is to offer a baseline test as well as a training routine that is made out of three pillars. So we have the training, challenges, and death match. So the training part, of course, involves the virtual coach. And the two other pillars are there to actually showcase and trace the improvements. So in the challenges, we have the players that compete with the community. So they, they simply play the mini games that I showed you before. We give them a score, and they can compare with the, each other or with the community. And then in the deathmatch mode, they test their abilities live in a multiplayer environment. And just as a side note, we only have the baseline and the challenge modes that are publicly available. Now, what about the training? Well, our goal is to propose an efficient training. And at the same time, the training should remain entertaining and fun for each and every player, right? So here in this figure, we show the uh, skill level of a player on the X axis. And on the Y axis, you can see how challenging a uh, training exercise is. Right. So if we aim too difficult with an exercise compared to the player's actual level, well, the player may feel overwhelmed or too stressed. On the contrary, if the exercise is too easy for the player's level, then the player is very likely to get bored. Right. So in both cases, the training may not fulfill its first and foremost objective, which was to make the player improve. Now, the flow zone, which we are actually targeting, is in fact the zone that lies between the two extremities, right? And hopefully by oscillating in this specific flow zone, we can achieve a good training accuracy and keep the, the player entertained. Now, the question is, how can we ensure that we stay in this flow zone? 
So let's have a look at the structure of a training session. So first, we have a short introduction here, which informs the user about what skill and what feature is going to be trained. So for example, let's assume that the player is not that good at shooting targets that appear far away. So we may instruct that user to focus on the long range accuracy while shooting. Then after the introduction, there is a series of exercises that are designed to focus on that specific weakness. And then here comes the important part. So here we implemented what we call a staircase procedure that is widely used in psychophysics, for example. And the idea behind this staircase procedure is that the difficulty of an exercise adapts as a function of the user's results. So for example, if I take the second exercise, well, the settings of this exercise will depend on the user's performance in the first exercise. And then same for the third exercise, the settings of this will depend on the results of the user in the second exercise, and so on. So to sum up, to sum up sorry, our goal here is to have challenging exercises at any moment in time and for any user, and we want to push the users to their limits so that we can hopefully help them to improve as fast as possible. And that's it for me. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any question. Thank you, Aline. Um, so people can put their questions in the chat or they can uh, raise their hand and then they can ask their question directly. If there is, um, I, I do have a, a oh, Peter has a question. Peter, go ahead. Sure. Th thanks for the presentation. It was really interesting. Um, I have a question as to how this is deployed. Is this deployed within CSGO or is this like a standalone um, game? My, my, it looked like it was deployed within CSGO. I'm just, I'm just wondering. Yeah, it is within CSGO. And then we have kind of a platform where we show the, the results and like, where you can basically see the, the ra radar that I showed you before and results compared to the community or to other players and stuff like this. But it is embedded in CSGO. I, I, yes. Oh, Pierre yes. has a question. Yeah, yeah uh, thanks a lot, Alin, for, for the presentation. I was curious in terms of data collection, are, are you only collecting data from inside the game or are you looking maybe at, I don't know, uh, filming what the player is looking at, like eye tracking or something else to maybe also improve and say, okay, maybe you should maybe look more into this direction sometimes or whatever. So I'm, I'm curious if you collect all like data outside of the game in the entire real world. Yeah, that's a very good point. And I guess it would be very interesting to have those kind of data, including also biometrics, but we don't. We, we only have really the, the in-game data here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 